we're looking at here, it goes back 2,000 years before Christ, so about 4,000 years ago, three to 4,000 years ago, and these are made, obviously, the ones here that are black from obsidian. That may even be a form of obsidian there. And then this is basalt, or basalto, as they would say here. And what these are, of course, is that's a fleshing device there for getting flesh, or the hide off the bone and pro or off the animal and probably the flesh and that's an arrowhead I think this would be a core that you can see how they've uh, chipped away at the sides to make these things here. Let's go back 5,000 years from today. Implements are from 500 BC to 500 AD and probably for archaeologists they can study these and see uh, the, n notice those differences and classify them. What's interesting here is the oles the two holes in there and I'm guessing that probably there was rope so they could hang from the ceiling. Telling me here that it's, that it's interesting that connects what we first saw with these is that these actually came from Kambaya, Kambaya. Um, and is a, are the result of when there was a volcanic eruption on this mountain then these people would quickly move to that other place and that's where they found these but it'd be the same people and then of course later on um, over time they would come back a key now we're talking the 500 to 1500 AD the same time frame for uh, Rumi Pampa. Notice here of course is the elegance of the design, how beautifully it's done, as well as uh, probable graphics that we can see just the remains of. So that's an evolution in the pottery. It's from the same time but it's a different technique. In this technique they would use dyes from plants and they would put them on the uh, ceramics and then they would put them in an oven and heat them to mucho color, very high, and then that would impregnate those colors and those designs that we see. Now notice what's interesting is these designs are fairly random, uh, in other words, except for here where it's not, <laughs> and maybe there too where we can see a little bit. So we may be not be seeing all that we can because here you can see uh, designs, graficas. Mm -hmm looking at are some of the grave goods that you used. These were quite elegant. Is uh, gold, uh -huh. gold, and notice those earrings. That would be a nose piece and uh, of course a necklace. And then this is uh, on the pector, right in the center of the chest, probably on a garment of course rather than impregnated in the person. And these would have been planted with the person who was died, showing that level of sophistication. Are gold, and they're like, I think, shells? Uh, no, it's uh, some jingle bells, some cascabel. Oh, jingle bells, uh -huh. bells. Okay, so these are like bells, and they would be in the bottom of the poncho like that uh, to give a sound. Mm -hmm. The poncho and also that an emblem for a very important person because this is a very uh, intricate and valuable in his time as well as now um, poncho. One of the things this inter evidence is is the the high degree of trade between Quito and the coast shells uh, that these would have been made from. These are uh, vessels that would have been uh, put into the grave as grave uh, goods that would contain items that this person would need in the afterlife. Are for storage for all kinds of things, could be liquid, maize, uh, uh, corn, uh, other kinds of things. And imagine someday when a computer can bring to life these graphics. It would be interesting that a person who is an archaeologist for many cultures in the world could compare this to other places in Asia, Greece, posture the person is in that that uh, crouched position if you will these are her knees here and then this material covers the rest of the skeleton or those kinds of vessels and also very unique in here uh, pieces of the conch shell uh -huh. are conch laid on conch top conch. of a conch shell um, um, poncho and the thing to imagine is how you would take a shell cut it into those little pieces and then drill a hole through it how much time and effort it would take how much such a person must have been respected to have had one of these the graphic illustrates how deep uh, some of the uh, vertical graves were notice this is 14 meters translate that into uh, into uh, 
um, feet, and then here's two more meters that held the uh, grave itself. But there were also grave sites. But look at the size of the ladder, uh, Escalera also. Mm -hmm. These were used as a, an extended family over time would keep consuming layers and layers. That's what you see right here. And this might be one period of time and lines for how the tombs might have looked. Here a simple tomb, um, here a little bit more extravagant, and here quite unique in that little kitchen right there, whatever that was for. More of these uh, vessels, but these are interesting because all over the world different cultures use these kind of small totems of uh, looks like personages or representations of the human face or form. Uh, to also accompany the dead in their grave. Usor. Uh -huh. uh, okay. Seems. What we would call an adel adel. Notice the sophistication of this one compared to what we've seen. With either brass, is that gold? Uh -huh. Also, so there's a gold uh, there that uh, provide, you can see how they're used here. Use yeah. And these little devices, how they locks into that one thing right there, the uh, shaft itself. Oh, that's interesting. The same period of Florida and the Rumipamba. Sí, sí es, es el mismo periodo de integración del 500 después de Cristo. So these are the same kinds of things, but from a different area. This one gives somewhat of the impression of an animal, maybe a bird or something like that. They look like shoes, they're called zapatos. Sí, ah, sí, and we, there it looks like a Ajá, shoe. Sí. Typical of the Karanqui uh, designs. Now through this elegant canvas structure, we're going to look at the actual remains that archaeologists have created. The purpose of this design is it's similar to the concha, which is so important as we can see f earlier from the grave sites. Looking at what's original, I wish there was something down there so we could get a sense of size, but maybe you can, if I put my hand out there, it's probably 10 feet across and um, probably, well, as you can see, 14 meters plus three down below. Um, huh. Ultimately hold 20 people down in there, along with the grave goods you've seen. The significance of it being round like this is that round personified were represented their um, perception of time. And obviously the circle of life is a phrase that embodies that. Birth, life, death being a circle. We can see how a family would be stacked up down there. Not much different than the catacombs, not the catacombs, well, they have the catacombs as well as some of the modern uh, cemeteries that we have where families will have um, their own grave site with uh, several cubicles for whatever's inside. There are two right here. I don't know whether it's a f uh, just an extension of the family as this uh, um, Would this uh, the two here would uh -huh. this be because the family is big and so they move over extend it? It's, it's possible. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. When here there was only one person per mm -hmm. floor if you will whereas in this style there are, are several people per floor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, in the deep, mm -hmm. uh, you can find two, one wo woman and one child. Ah. Uh huh. M uh, maybe. This uh, uh, represents the life of people. This is conceptually different in that the large one here represents life, and the smaller one represents um, death. But the connection, of course, is made. So this design, which almost looks like Corazon, uh, <laughs> is that we have a life and we have death, and then we have that section there for the gods. The gods meaning the sun, the moon, and the pinchincha uh -huh, okay. uh, behind us. Uh -huh. we want to look at here is, this is the trunk of a tree that was placed there during an actual volcanic eruption, mm -hmm. which actually has four, it's kind of hard to see, this is one, two, and then a third one over there hinted at, um, and then a fourth one here, 230 A.D. here. 600. Okay, and 600. Another culture to the north, and those marks may be some symbology, but we don't, I don't know what they are. 